Uh, as long as uh, you're here, uh, I have to ask you, it's a question that I've seen uh, asked online and uh, particularly, I guess, as we're thinking about um, different applications like smart buildings and industrial, I wanted mm -hmm. to get a real drill down from you on the different uh, use cases uh, because I've seen other ask, others asked about the difference between a Cat 6A shielded versus when to use Cat 6A unshielded. It's it's a it is an evergreen topic. Uh, I think is what I would I'll call it. And um, in in my years in the industry, uh, I think the I think probably the the way that I would go about it is that for most most purposes and most applications, unshielded or UTP 6A will fit the bill for pretty much most of the applications. Uh, there are going to be some applications where you probably have some more harsh environments that could affect performance, whether it be uh, EMI or noise, all these things that can come into play. And shielding and extra shielding could potentially help in those applications, those environments. Uh, to what extent? that is going to be very location, installation, uh, application dependent. And the way that we address that at Comscope is we probably have one of the largest organizations of field engineers uh, in, the, in, you know, in the world. And all of them are really smart guys and, and gals. And they know the ins and outs of a lot of these applications in, by a regional basis. And so what we encourage our customers to do is to reach out to your local Comscope engineer to help go over testing requirements, application design, and then also just cable design and what application and what, what uh, um, solution sets makes the most sense for that application. And it might surprise you, unshielded probably works out just as well as if you thought with the shielded application, or there'll be times where you're like, no, I need to have shielded based off of regional requirement, right? So those are things that we also have to take into account. And luckily for us, and I'm, I'm, I'm I'm on. The, I'm driving the bus, right? I'm driving the Comscope bus. Luckily for Comscope, we have great solutions on both the shielded and unshielded side of things when it comes to 6A. Okay, uh, understood. And thanks for that. And a um, couple more questions for you. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to phrase it, but what will be or will there be um, an upper limit for what Cat 6A cabling? can handle in terms of uh, future speed, distance, uh, Wi-Fi uh, standards. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we started off the discussion talking about how long the technology's uh, been around uh, presently. Um, you know, is that upper limit idea useful to think about? Uh, you know, is there a uh, ceiling and I, uh, your response on this is going to lead me into my next question, but I'll just uh, leave it there. Sure. Um, I think I think the uh, the safe thing to say uh, is that all the standards around Ethernet are based on a 10 gig 100 meter channel, right? And from a 10 gig 100 meter channel, Category 6A probably is the most bang for the buck when it comes to applications supporting 10 gig in that 100 meter channel, uh, whether it be power, data, or power and data together. Um, are we pushing the upper limits of the delivery of copper cable when it comes to bandwidth to devices? We have not seen uh, electrical, you know, uh, uh, Ethernet really kind of in the enterprise push into above the 10 gig realm, right? Once we kind of, there's this magical threshold that happens around 25 gig, uh, 50, you know, 40, 50, 100, where pretty much everyone just defaults over to fiber for, for long. And then the thing about fiber is that it gets you the longer distances, right? Because optics can go pretty far. You can, there are, they're expensive, but, but you have optics that can go 80 kilometers. And there's no way that you're gonna do 80 kilometers in a building unless you have a very large building. And then that would be pretty impressive. You'd be touching the, the stratosphere there. But uh, uh, when it comes to that though, there is a trade-off, right? We don't have, a per circuit power delivery like we do when it comes to ethernet with power over ethernet. So when we talk about upper limits and we talk about speeds, on the electrical side on ethernet, we're looking at 10 gig, 100 meter channel. If we're looking at more than that from a distribution standpoint, it, now we start talking about network architectures and what makes the most sense for the data delivery 
the power delivery, and the distribution of the connecti connection points. So then we might look at different architectures that are going to maybe branch off from our, our traditional TR to uh, a zone with I have all my cables coming down or going into uh, uh, where my access points are and the channels that look like. I might have more distribution uh, that has more fiber. I might have uh, distributed architectures some star topologies that come up. But those are things that we have to look at as we try to make this delicate balance of power and data delivery across our structured cabling systems.